Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Now, a lot of you don't really know me. You have jumped on board during the last four, five, six, seven, eight months. You've subscribed. You, you faithfully watch, even if you haven't subscribed. And you see me from the point of the videos. But you don't know from whence I came. See, one thing they always say, don't forget where you came from. Mm -hmm. Well, let me introduce you to moi. I was born out of wedlock, conceived and born out of wedlock, by a mother who was coming out of a failing marriage, and a father who was a moving man. And once the pregnancy took place, the marriage was arranged for the sake of the child, which deeply hurt my mother because she was very needy emotionally. She wanted to be the apple of my father's eye and resented the fact that his daughter was the apple of, yeah. So that put a lot of contention between this baby and my mother. Anyway, so as it turned out, after about two years, my mother had that post-mortem, whatever you call it, where they go into deep depression after having a child. And she ended up having a nervous breakdown. Now, my mother was deeply scarred from her childhood because she was abused, emotionally, verbally, and physically. She had to navigate through a whole life dealing with all those hurts. And because she was not saved, she had no idea that God could heal every single one. So here she comes through life, damaged good, so to speak. My father convinces her to marry for the sake of the child. And they started out the first seven or eight years of my life with a very volatile relationship. I started stuttering at age six and seven. Somehow I stopped at age nine. I don't know how that happened, but I stuttered. I sounded like a, I mean, I sounded retarded. It was horrible. I could, I could imitate it. It was just horrible. I could barely, especially you put me on the spot and get me standing in front of a group of people. It was worse because I knew the kids were going to make fun of me. And I was so tired of being hurt, so tired of being rejected, so tired of being made fun of. And the worst rejection was from my mother. Now, what I didn't tell you was the reason they got married so late when I was six was because for two years my mother was in an, an insane asylum. She had a nervous breakdown. And all of us get got tossed into orphanages. Well, because my father had given me his last name, he had legal parental rights. Thank God he did it before she had the nervous breakdown. And he was able to locate me and get me out of that orphanage. It didn't happen overnight, but he got it done. Okay, so I spent a year and a half, almost two years with my godparents, and, and they were very sweet people. And after that, my father came and brought me home, and we became one big unhappy family, me and my brothers and sisters. And guess what? This is the way I felt. On the outside looking in, I felt like the outsider of my family. I felt like the reject. I felt like the one that everybody just had to tolerate. Oh, here she comes. They didn't treat me meanly, but you could tell there was a bond with them. They grew up together. I was the instant addition. Me and my father. Anyway, but my father took care of all of them. He took care of the whole family. As I grew up, and the through the arguments and the fussing and the fuming, 
my mother was extremely insecure so she was very jealous and she would sit me down and drill me and and if I acted like I wanted too much affection from my father which girls do she would call me a little bitc yeah you know you know the word mm -hmm. and uh you know it's normal for a six seven year old to do but she had me thinking something was wrong with me she had me thinking i was retarded don't you say a word and she always made me feel like she really didn't want me now I know my mother loved me. I mean, my mother stood up and protected me. She took care of me. She taught me. She did everything that a mother's supposed to do. But from a slant, because she was still in tilt psychologically. So she did the best she could do with what she had to work with. I understand that. You know why? Yeah. So... I just want you to know that no matter what hurts you come through, and I came through a lot, you guys. I used to wish I had never been born. I grew up literally hating myself. I hated my looks. I hated my voice. I hated my hair. I hated my size. I hated my name. Everything about me. I hated my smile. I hated everything about me. Between the kids in school making fun of me all the time and my mother putting me down at home, I felt like a nobody. I felt like I should never have been born. And if I hadn't been born, my mother would have been a happy woman. But I made her life miserable. I mean, that's what kids do. They take the blame, <laughs> you know. So anyway, I went through all that hurt and all that rejection. And here's the thing. I grew up. No matter what tournament I won, no matter what award I got or what trophy I brought home, I still felt like a nobody. No matter how, how, how great I partied all night, how long I danced, and how long I screwed, I felt like a nobody. All in the middle of it. Turmoil just bubbling up inside of me. Because Mama Sita was full of self-hate. Full of it. And there was no life in me. I felt like the walking dead. I used to always say that. I even wrote a poem. I don't know whatever happened to the poem. About how I felt like an inanimate object. Listen. A lot of you go through life and you think that you are doomed to live with your emotional scars until the day you die. That's a lie from the pit, you guys. I am an example of God's thorough emotional, psychological healing. Of God's spiritual deliverance. God delivered me from a root of rejection almost 20 years after I had been saved. Because from day one to today, I'm constantly asking God if there's anything in there that needs healing, heal it. Anything needs cleansing, cleanse it. Pull it out at the root. Get rid of the attitude. Give me more love. I'm constantly and because I constantly dealt with that issue, God did a lot of healing in me in a shorter period of time than most because I stayed on it. I rode that pony baby till the, till the thing was over, till there was no more pony to ride because I did not want to go through my life hurting anymore. Now, when you see me or anybody else on YouTube, Facebook, wherever, encouraging you to get to know God. It ain't about carrying no Bible and sitting up in church. It ain't about putting money in a bucket. 
It's not about carrying a cross around your neck, carrying a Bible under your arm and advertising, I'm a Christian. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. And learning all the church cliches. No, it's not about that. It's about God getting deep down inside of you. Introducing you to yourself. So you don't have to go through life saying, I don't know who I am. I don't know why I was born. Oh, let me tell you, baby. When you get to know God, you get to know you. You get to know why you're here. Purpose. Healing. Wholeness. There's an old song I used to sing. It's, it's an old church song. He took me and made something beautiful out of my life. He took me and made something beautiful out of my life. He took a wretch, a wretch like me, and showed me his love and concern. And by his grace, he made my life a new and better one. I owe him my all. I cannot let him down. Cause he's the one who made something beautiful out of my life. Isaiah 61 says, he will give you beauty for your ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Mm, mm, mm. If you only knew the God I knew. If you only knew his love. His love manifested to me one night in my living room. I was saved, but I still kind of felt like a little bit of a nobody, at least insignificant. And all of a sudden, God's love permeated the atmosphere and it enveloped itself around me and I instantly knew the love I was feeling. It was supernatural love. It was nothing like anything you feel on earth. No, it was unearthly. It was an out-of-this-world type of love. Supernatural. And when that thing enveloped me, I knew instantly that the love I was feeling was actually God himself. Tender yet majestic. So, after experiencing, after knowing and recognizing this is God, I actually said out of my mouth as I was bawling, I was, I was a, a, a <laughs> woo, I was a snivelly mess. And I said, God, I'm calm now, but I could barely talk through the tears. I said, God, for you to come out of eternity to a nobody like me to show me you love me? I don't care what anybody else said to a nobody. Yeah, to a nobody like me. No, no matter what anybody else says, no matter what anybody else feels about me. Guess what? I am somebody now. That was the first time in my life I felt like I deserved to be here. I felt like I was worth something because of God, not because of a sermon. Not because of a song. Not because of a man. Because of God. You have got to give him a, ch a chance. I'm telling you. He'll make such a difference in your life. I have the courage to go through some stuff. Only because of him. I live alone. I have no kids. That's fine. I don't have no problem with not having kids. But because I don't have kids, I don't have that, that reinforcement, the backup. You know, kids come check up on me, fix this, fix that, whatever. I'm alone. But guess what? I don't feel alone because I have God. I have God looking after me. I have God taking care of me. Lifting my spirits when I start to feel low. I can always call on him and know he'll minister to me. 
He may not change the circumstance right at that moment, but he'll change the way I feel about it. And that makes all the difference in the world. It's supernatural. God is supernatural. Salvation is supernatural. Not some ordinary thing sitting up in church. No, it's a relationship with God. And until you get that, you will always be bogged down with the with the uh, the rudiments of religion. And religion ain't got nothing to do with it. It's relationship, baby. And until you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, You'll be in and out of salvation like, a, like you're changing socks. Because nothing can hold you like the love of God. Nothing can keep you like a close encounter, a close touch from God. Nothing can, can, whew, nothing can mend you like the supernatural inner healing power of God. God bless you as you finally decide to take the plunge with this invisible entity we name God that you have never experienced. And I plead with you to hang in there until you do. God bless you.